I want you to make our very special guest feel welcome today. I need you to write in the chat right now, welcome Raj, because ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in the Driving the Line universe, one of my favorite people in the whole world, he has his own show. It's called the Sports Lodge, AM830, Angels Radio, out here in Los Angeles, and he joins us live right here on the show right now. Let's bring him in, and there you go. Thank you, Keenan. Welcome to Raj, and listen. This man knows Angels baseball better than anybody. First and foremost, Roger Lodge, welcome to the show for the very first time. Good morning, sir. Coach, couldn't be more thrilled to be here with you and your great crew. This is an honor for me. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, so this is a this is a bit this is a biggie for me to be on. I'm on driving the line. Look at <laughs> yeah. me, Mom. Let's go. But here's what I want to know. Yeah, I'm dying okay. to know this. When yes. you are in your last production meeting. And yes. you're talking about oh the Shohei situation with Ipe. Who should we get? And and you and you say in the meeting, I know. Let's get the guy from Blind Date. What's the reaction in the room? Were they like, what? Chuck Woolery's not available. Why are we going with Lodge? Well, you you I guess you feel like we actually have production meetings, Roger, for this <laughs> show, which we do not. We absolutely do not. However, for people who don't know, because I talk about you on the show here all the time, you just don't know it. Now, you've been around Shohei. He's been on the Angels. You do the pregame show every single day. So for six and a half years, you've been around this man. Were you shocked first and foremost to even see his name attached to something like this? I have to admit I was because the times, the interactions that I've had with Shohei, whether it's been on the show or hosting Angel corporate events and he would be part of it, he'd come up on stage with me. And Shohei's, one thing that a lot of people don't realize about Shohei, this guy's one of the funniest guys you'll ever want to meet. He always just wants to have a good time. Uh, he was wonderful and uh, nice and kind and gentle and polite and respectful. So, yeah, I was uh, very taken back and surprised to hear his name attached with this. And the other thing was Ipe, his, his interpreter. Uh, you know, the Angels have a barbecue during spring training the last, uh, you know, as long as I've been around. And the one guy my kids always wanted to go get a picture with was Ipe. And that's a guy that was, again, kind and respectful and so wonderful and so classy. So this whole thing is just a little surreal for me. And it's it's it, it's pretty crazy. We're joined now by Roger Lodge, host of AM 830, the Sports Lodge out here on ESPN Radio in Los Angeles. Roger, I've had a lot of people text me or tweet me. And they're like, man, $4.5 million. All these different stories are flying around about the fact. One thing that's not disputed, though, is the, the money did come out of an account that is connected to Shohei. Just how close are these two men to each other? Oh, attached at the hip. Whenever Shohei was, whenever Shohei was in the yard, when, wherever he was, Ipe was there. The they were together all the time, pretty much twenty four seven. And that's you know, people talk about the speculation that maybe he had uh, you know access to some of Shohei's bank accounts and all that kind of stuff. But let's not forget, not only was Shohei and Ipe together at the ballpark 24-7, but especially when Shohei first arrived here in America and he's trying to establish himself, he's got to find a place to live, he's got to set up bank accounts. Ipe was probably there more than likely interpreting those situations as well. So, you know, I don't want to speculate here because it would be awfully irresponsible, irresponsible of me to do that. But maybe just maybe there's the possibility that the, when, when they went into a bank to establish a bank account, maybe Ipe was part of that process and mm -hmm. had access to Shohei's accounts. I don't know. And again, I don't want to over speculate. But coach, here's the thing, man. I, I think this all comes down to a pretty simple process. I think like right here, I have in my hand, this is rule 21, Major League Baseball the, with the players. Okay, let me read this to you. Okay. Any player, umpire, or club or league official or empl employee who places bets with illegal bookmakers or agents for illegal bookmakers shall be subject to such penalty as the commissioner deems appropriate. I mean, coach, the guys who are working the pitch clock, this, this applies to them, mm -hmm. the players, the coaches, anyone associated 
with Major League Baseball. You cannot be taking part with illegal gamblers. And last time I looked, or the FBI is currently investigating Matthew Boyer, the guy who you know was the bookmaker for for allegedly mm-hmm. uh, Ipe and Shohei. So it's going to the one thing that's I think brought up the most question is the fact that that story that Ipe gave ESPN Mm -hmm. 24 hours later, that thing not only changed, it completely changed. So until somebody steps up and gives us some truth here, I think there's going to be all kinds of speculation and all kinds of questions. But if those two accounts, if the two payments of $500,000 did come from Shohei's account, Coach, we're talking about Shohei Otani. If if we go with Ipe's version, yep, knowingly contributing to an illegal bookmaker, that's a problem for Major League Baseball and for Shohei. And two different things here. And the fact that they were playing overseas doesn't help because you're getting all these reports back in real time. But they're over there that he addressed the team. He was very remorseful. But then Shohei kind of knew what he was talking about. Now his representatives are coming and changing the story to your point. So two things. If the bets were made, we know that they are, but the reports are that never, if they said, I've never bet on baseball, I knew the rules, what you just read to us, they tell us that in spring training. So he's already addressed that reportedly. And then the other thing that I've seen a lot of, and it makes me think that Shohei deferred all of that money. $680 $680 million. He's only making $2 million a year. So if he was to get suspended, let's say for half a season, it wouldn't be the $35 million. It would be $1 million. And when those two things are put together, it, it, it's going to lead to more speculation, wouldn't you yeah. think? Yeah. Oh, without question. And it's going to come down to Shohei's attorneys who came out 24 hours after it based story and said, no, no, this is mass theft. It's going to come down to how much can they prove without a shadow of a doubt that Shohei knew nothing about this. So, you know, we'll we'll have to wait and see what happens. So as we move forward now, and you've been so up close and personal with Shohei for so long. The other part about this is, and you just read that at the commissioner's discretion, right? Major League Baseball not only has become a gigantic sport financially in the last few years because of the rule changes, uh, because of of how they've addressed baseball on TV here in the States, but also outside of the United States. And this man is a gigantic superstar. How much do you think, twofold question, the fact that he's not an American superstar will affect any of this, but the fact that he's so important to Major League Baseball outside of the United States will play into that as well. Let me put it this way, coach. I've been going out to Angel Stadium for a long, long time since I was a little bitty boy growing up in Lakewood, California and jumping on my sister's purple bike and riding it up Catella and parking it out in front of the big A and paying 75 cents to sit in the upper deck. I've been going to this ballpark for well over 40 years. I have never, ever, ever seen a play brought the excitement that Shohei Otani brought to Angel State. He's the only player I have ever seen in in my entire life where little girls would run down the aisle and stand behind the Angel dugout just to get a picture or just to get a glimpse of the guy. And they, I would see tears streaming down their face because they were just so excited to see their hero, Shohei Otani. He is, without a doubt, baseball's only super-duper star. At the All-Star Game every year, whose gear at the team stores is the first to sell out during the All-Star Game? It's Shohei Otani. And with uh, social media, of course, taking over everything, this guy is a worldwide icon he's as popular as any athlete is there is around the world uh maybe a couple of soccer players coming to play there no doubt that uh Shohei Otani 
baseball's only super duper star and i've never seen anything like it to answer your question how much of a hit that remains to be seen last question because we've seen stories come out before many many times and gambling now is not what it was 20 years ago everybody does it right it's legal in the united states now so it's a different perspective but if it comes out that shohei was actually not only just involved in transferring the money, but actually made some bets himself. How will that muddy all of the waters, separate from any betting on baseball, if he actually did any of the betting? Oh, gosh, Coach, that's a tough one, man. That is a tough question uh, because he's so and, – and, and I think there's – in a lot of these situations, it comes down to likability – and, and yep. how much we like this guy and how much we're in their corner and how much we're rooting for them. I don't think I've seen an athlete in the last 25 years that people love more and are rooting for more. And I don't think a lot of people want to believe what you just laid out there. I don't think people want to believe that. And they're looking for any reason not to have to go there. Because like I said, he's so likable, respectful. I mean, I've been around a lot of ball players and, and interviewed a lot of guys. And he's at the top. He's up there with the Mike Trouts wow. of the world. Uh, just one of the, not only one of the greatest players you'll ever want to meet, but one of the best people you'll ever want to meet. He was really, really great every time I had interactions with him. And I wish the guy nothing but the best. And But again, I don't know if this is going to go away because of what I read here about, you know, this is number 21 in the player's code. You can't have yeah. any association, any association with the legal gamblers here. And last time I Matthew Boyer, the guy involved here, is being investigated by the FBI. So much has to play out here before we rush to any types of judgment. I just hope it all works out because when I watch Shohei Otani play baseball, there's nobody, nobody better going first to third and the helmet flies off and we got a head and shoulders commercial on my television as that hair is blown in the wind. It's absolutely beautiful. Just like when you used to do it back in the day on Blind Date with the <laughs> the hair just blowing everywhere, Roger Lodge. Those hair days for us are long gone. <laughs> the insight, amazing. You know I love you, buddy. AM 830, the Sports Lodge, every single day out here on the West Coast, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Roger Lodge, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Honored to be here, Coach. Thank you, sir.